Hi, welcome to the second video of Bermuda Expat series. In this video, I'll be sharing a step-by-step -step guide to find the best rental property in Bermuda. First of all, make sure you have permission to come and live in Bermuda. This sounds very obvious, but I want to make it very clear. You can't just simply turn up in Bermuda and hope to figure out all the details on finding a job, getting permits and choosing a place to live afterwards. If you're a potential expat, then most likely you will already have found a job or are looking for a job on this beautiful island. Non-Bermudian residents will need to get a permit that will allow them to work and live on the island. I'll be making a separate video on this soon with lots of advice and tips on finding a job in Bermuda. If you're unable to find a job on the island, then I would still recommend that you consider coming for a fantastic holiday here. Let me know in the comments if you would find a separate series focused on visiting Bermuda interesting and helpful. I would also like to add that it is possible to purchase a property on the island, but there are special rules for owning a home here. If this is something you are interested in, then I would suggest reaching out to a real estate agent on the island and seeking separate legal advice. However, as most of us expats would have to rent, and that is what I'll be focusing on this video today. Now, let's get into the house hunting tips, starting with calculating your rough budget. If you have found this video, then you have probably already discovered that Bermuda is one of the most expensive places to live in the world, and housing costs are no exception. So deciding on how much you can spend each month on rent is definitely a great place to start. To determine this, I found it useful to first create a monthly budget with the total household income at the top and then deduct the estimated costs of everything you'll need to pay in a usual month. Don't forget to take into account one of big costs and annual costs as well. If you haven't seen it yet, in my first video uh, for Bermuda Expat series, I discussed the cost of living in Bermuda. Feel free to check it out as that would help you understand the other costs that you'll have living on the island. The rent varies greatly depending on where on the island you would like to live and the quality of the property. In general, the closer to the city of Hamilton you are, the more expensive the rent gets. However, there are other locations around the island that can also demand a higher price. This is likely because they are close to the water, golf courses, schools or in popular neighborhoods. In our experience, you can find reasonable one or two bedroom houses or flats that are priced between $2,000 to $3,000 per month. However, if you want something at a higher end in a perfect location, then you'll need to pay quite a bit more. It's also possible to get the costs lowered by looking at a studio apartment or considering sharing a house or flat with others and splitting the rent and bills evenly each month. Uh, generally, I would recommend trying not to spend more than 30 to 40% uh, percent of your salary on rent. And also remember that the more income you have each month as a spare, the more you can use to have fun on the island and even save. So once you decide on your budget, the second step should be to list all your must-haves and good-to-haves. To give you an example, our list of requirements that we had on our absolute must-have when we were first looking for a place to rent were something not too far from the main town, which is Hamilton, so that the commute into the town is not too long each day. Uh, includes all the major appliances such as air conditioning, dishwasher and laundry, at least semi-modern and clean, uh, and having a parking spot for a car and a bike. Uh, our nice to have but not essentials were a nice outside space, close to a beach, near the railway trail, which is uh, the main walking trail on the island, and having uh, a possible ocean view. It is important to know that not every property in the more affordable ranges includes all appliances that you might be accustomed to. Everyone obviously has different requirements, but in Bermuda it is very common for cheaper properties 
not to include a dishwasher, washing machine, dryer, and in rare cases, not even air conditioning. So ask yourself if you are happy to share a communal washer dryer or would like to have your own private one. Also ask if not having a dishwasher is a deal breaker. You will probably don't believe me, but during the winter season, it does get a bit chilly. So having an air conditioner that can also heat can save you hunting for a portable heater down the road. Now you may be thinking like, hang on, I thought moving to Bermuda will allow me to live in this paradise with every possible luxury. What about a pool, an ocean view, or even a dock for my boat? Well, you'll be pleased to know that all those things are possible here, but like anywhere else in the world, these luxuries come at a substantial price. As a quick note about being close to the ocean actually, when I first moved to here, I was super keen on the idea of living on the beach, having a view that overlooks in to the incredibly blue waters of Bermuda. However, after uh, a year, my opinion somewhat changed and I actually began to think being close to the ocean is slightly overrated. Uh, for example, when you're close to the water, the risk of severe damage during the hurricane season, uh, a lot of humidity and salt water rusting all your belongings. I definitely will add a video on Bermuda hurricane season with all the useful information and survival tips that we have picked up. So stay tuned for that. Um, after deciding on your budget, must-haves, good-to-haves, now you can narrow your search down to different parishes that you would consider living in. I'll bring up a map of the island split into different parishes now so you can see clearly what I'm talking about. The island is split into nine different parishes and you can use them in your property searches as a way to filter out the parish that might not suit your needs. For example, as we didn't want to be too far from the city of Hamilton, we chose not to consider houses in Sandys and St. George's as they are at the either end of the island and would take the longest to commute each day. Every parish has its own pros and cons depending on your tastes and requirements, so only you can do the necessary research and decide on where is best for you. We currently live in Paget and we love how central it is and that is also close to the beautiful South Shore beaches. Um, that being said, we still find ourselves traveling to all the different parishes very regularly to visit our favorite restaurants, beaches, friends and to go to the events. Now that you have narrowed down all your requirements and searched for different areas that you would like to live, you are ready to start browsing the options. The best websites to find the different options that are currently available are um, Property Skipper, Emu, The Property Group and even some Facebook groups. I'll definitely put the links in the description below so you can uh, check them out. Once you find some, something that uh, you are interested in, uh, here are some things that would be useful to learn from the landlord, agent, and if you can, previous tenants actually. Uh, and these are how much do the utilities cost? Uh, what utilities are used in the property? Electric, gas, water, because not all houses have gas, but all have electricity. And how big is the water tank? Is and also is there a connection to water mains because Bermuda houses usually collect the rainwater in a tank under each house therefore usually there is not any bills uh, related to water but however um, if the tank runs out then you might need to refill the tank so it's worth checking uh, but if you're careful with your water consumption then that shouldn't be an issue if you're sharing a tank with the others on a property for example in a block of condos then figure out in advance how much cost the refilling of the tank would be and how it will be split. I have included a link in the description to an interesting article that we found from the BBC about how and why the Bermuda rainwater is collected. Another question to ask is who is responsible for the repairs and maintenance costs? There are usually, uh, they are usually covered by the landlord but I'd recommend checking them with the landlord or the agent as well. 
Then the next question is, when is the property available? So the properties advertised can be available immediately or they can be advertised in advance of when they're going to be available. If you fall in love with a property but it is available before you need it, then remember that it may be possible to negotiate on the lease start date. Um, if you have any pets or would like to have some pets in the future, uh, you should check this with the agent and the landlord in advance of signing the lease. Other restrictions that I'm thinking of are non-smoking tenants. So make sure you read uh, everything carefully before committing. The, lease, uh, the leases tend to start at one year, but can be negotiable depending on your situation, can be longer or shorter. And also if you know anyone uh, already on the island, it can be friends, family, colleagues, definitely don't be afraid to ask their opinion. Uh, if you find a property, it's a very small island, so there is every chance that you get to have some useful information on the property or the area beforehand. Uh, for example, when we were moving to the island, we found that the agent uh, for the property was a close friend with uh, our colleague from the HR department, which gave us uh, an extra comfort in our decision. And also remember that Bermuda is a very small island, so be sure to be polite and professional with all your inquiries. We found that the island acts as like a one big community and the vast majority of everyone we have met were super friendly and helpful. Um, so final bonus tips. If you really like a property, then act quickly because the nice and reasonably priced places can go super fast. If you can, uh, second tip, if you can, then think about potential visitors uh, uh, such as family and friends because hotels and Airbnb are very expensive and having an extra bedroom makes this so much affordable for the guests. Um, get to know your landlord and neighbors. Um, this will make you have great friends, uh, but it also will add up to the community spirit if everyone helps each other out. And lastly, if you can't find the perfect place when you first move to the island, don't panic. <laughs> it may be actually uh, working out your advantage as you'll learn so much more about the island while you're living here and then you can move on to another place down the line when a better option uh, comes up. Hopefully you found this video useful and fingers crossed I'll get to see you on the island soon. And please subscribe like and subscribe to support me and stay tuned for more videos in Bermuda Expat series. <laughs> oh, that was a long one. <laughs> Take care and see you at the next video. Bye! <laughs>